Hi everyone, now here at Deep Sky Videos you know we're on a bit of a quest to make films about all the Messier objects, but they're not the only videos we make, and if there's something else you'd like us to cover, something else in space you want to find out about, black holes or stars or galaxies, any question, you can always send us a question and we'll try to cover it in a film. Here's all the usual ways you can get in touch with us, there's email and Facebook and Twitter, or you can even get in touch the old-fashioned way and leave a comment under the YouTube video. But for now, it's another Messier object. It's M4. Yes, another globular cluster. But, as usual, we found something interesting to say about it. A globular cluster is a very spherical collection of very, very old stars that orbits in the halo of our galaxy. And it's the fact that it's a collection of old stars that's important for what we're going to talk about today. Although globular clusters typically orbit around the halo of the Milky Way, so quite far out of the plane of our galaxy, M4 is one of the closest globular clusters to Earth. It's only 5,600 light years away, slightly north of the plane of our galaxy. And for this reason, it was chosen as the subject of a study with the Hubble Space Telescope to try to uncover the age of the universe by looking at some of the oldest stars in this globular cluster. There are a special class of stars called white dwarfs that we're going to use to do this age dating of the universe. White dwarfs are incredible objects. They're the remnants of what's left over after a normal star such as our Sun has finished with its thermonuclear reaction. And in fact, it's the end product of over 95% of the stars in our galaxy. What is left is this ball of degenerate material. A mass of about the size of our Sun, packed into a volume about the size of our Earth. It slowly radiates its energy off into space and will cool and become dimmer over many billions, even trillions of years. So it's as if we're stumbling on a campfire that's gone out, and all we see are the embers left of the campfire. We want to know when this campfire was lit. If we can date the embers, we have a lower bound of when the campfire was, was going. And likewise, if we can date these white dwarfs, which are some of the oldest stars that we know of, we have a lower bound on the age of the universe. This globular cluster is particularly useful because it's so close to the Earth. And that means these white dwarfs, which are intrinsically very, very, very faint, we can see the very oldest of these white dwarfs. And this could only be done by staring at this globular cluster for many, many hours, if not days, with the Hubble Space Telescope. Of course, this doesn't tell us how old the age of the universe is, but it gives us a very good cross-check against other methods that do as well. So our best handle on the age of the universe comes from measuring the expansion rate of the galaxies and extrapolating back to when the Big Bang must have occurred. And we think that that happened now 13.7 billion years ago. When we age date these white dwarfs in this globular cluster and figure out the ages of the very oldest and very dimmest white dwarfs, we get an age of about 12 billion years. What that means is that those stars were formed only a billion years after the Big Bang, which is essentially very, very quick. Um, and Luckily, it works out the right way. If these stars turned out to be older than our current understanding of the age of the universe, we would, of course, be in trouble. So that's why we need all of these different cross-checks to make sure that we're building a consistent picture of how our universe and how the stars and galaxies in the universe were formed. 